if you haven't seen the disclaimer for this video series, please do it now. The recommended viewing speed is 1.5 speed. Good evening, my friends. In this segment, we will implement the mimic hashing function. One version will be in CIRCOM for generating the zero-knowledge proof, and the other version will be in Solidity for deployment later on the blockchain. So that will be included in the backend. Here I have the original paper open titled Mimic Efficient Encryption and Cryptographic Hashing with Minimal Multiplicative Complexity. So that's the that's what Mimic stands for, Minimal Multiplicative Complexity. When you want to do things on the blockchain, you can't the hashing function can't be too complex because then if it if the multiplicative complexity is very high, it will take too much gas and that hashing function will incur great cost to the user. So in this case, this particular cryptographic primitive, as the abstract states, is very specifically designed for zero knowledge proofs and other applications that requires a faster, more efficient hashing function. Now, obviously, we are not going to go through this paper, which is 34 pages. But fortunately, one of the collaborator, Arnab Roy, highlighted here, has a blog. And one of the subsections, he's a researcher in Switzerland, I think, right now. And we are not friends. His blog has a subsection that very briefly and clearly describes how this hashing function works. This is not even a full page of PDF. And I redacted the uh, more or less very technical part so we can have a clear, succinct information on how this hashing function is implemented. And the basic idea is that when you have an input X, you throw it through multiple rounds of encryption. And for each round, what happens? You add a constant value K and another constant C to the input, then simply exponentiate that base number by a power. And as you repeatedly do that for several rounds, it continuously and increasingly obscures the original number, which is why it comes out as a hash. And it's an irreversible function, which all hash functions are. There are two specifics I want to talk about. First is the number of rounds for this hashing function. The number of rounds is arbitrary. For Tornado Cache, the original source code has about 90 rounds. For demo purposes, because we are this is an educational series, I'm going to choose the arbitrary number 10, because then everything will fit on the screen and you will clearly see how it works. The second part, I want to talk about the constants. The k is a constant that you supply with the original x value to the hashing function. But all these values c's, as denoted here, the random constants are chosen as random elements in a finite field at an initiation of mimc and then fixed. So that means when you're implementing a mimic hashing function. You need to generate a bunch of constants for each round of addition. Then you can just hard code them into your code. And they stay the same no matter what you're hashing. Note that there are no round keys. Instead, the same key is used in each round and once at the end. That's the k value that you supply with your input. All the operations are defined in the underlying field f, q. Remember, recall from the second episode in this whole series, I showed you the random scatter. That's what makes it all work in this case, because throwing the input x into multiple stages of addition and exponentiation, you will very much arrive at a value, a random value in a finite field 
which is what makes this hashing function effective. Before we write any circom, let's make some notes because this language might still not be very familiar to you. So first of all, I want to make a note that instead of the cubic power, we're going to raise the base number to the fifth power. So the increase, the increased exponentiation will add obscurity to the original input. So this will increase the security. This is also the, the power chosen in tornado, tornado cache. It's raised to the fifth power. Recall that for circum, first of all, you can't multiply more than two numbers together. So for each round, let's just look at one round. You will get a base number that you want to exponentiate and that is calculated as x. This is the value from last round of encryption. For the first round it's just the input plus k. k is the same for each round. You can see here it's all the same value. The constant that changes is the c plus ci and we will generate the c before running the hashing function. So don't worry about that. Then to calculate the fifth power we need to calculate several intermediate values. First you need to calculate the square which is base times base. Then you calculate the fourth power which is base squared times base squared. Then you can get to the fifth power by multiplying the fifth, fourth power with the base again. So this is how you get to the fifth power when you, the only thing you can do for multiplication is to multiply only two numbers together. And this process happens for each round. These obviously will be declared as signals. And because it happens to, for each round, it will be declared as an array of signals. The length is equal to the number of rounds. That's how we're going to do it. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, there will be 10 rounds. So the number of rounds will be 10. Let's write some code. Here I have an empty directory as usual. By the way, for SnarkJS and Circum, if you install their packages globally, then their command line utilities will be available everywhere on the command line. So you don't really need a package JSON in this case. All right, just follow the instructions. Their instructions on the GitHub pages. All right, first create a circuit. I'm going to name it circuit.circum and let's start writing. Declare the version of circum you're going to use, in this case 2.0.0. Then declare a template. I'm going to call it MIMC mimic 5 because it's raised to the fifth power, not the third as described. And for expert, Export, I'm going to say component main is equal to mimic5. So this will export this template. What do we need first? First, there are the inputs signal, input x, and another key variable k. Then comes the intermediate signals for each round. Before that, number of rounds is 10. And then I'm going to declare utilities for each round, which is first of all, you have the last output value from the last round. Signal last output. 
some this many values. The base value that you're going to exponentiating for each round. This is going to be just a summation. I declare it as signal, but really that's not necessary. I declared it as signal because it will look more, it will look nicer. That's all the reason. So a square, a fourth power, and we're done. So then comes the loop for bar i equal to zero, i is smaller than number rounds, i plus plus. For each round, what do you need to do? First, you need to calculate the base value that you're going to exponentiate. So base, the base value for that round is the last output for that round plus the k value plus ci. I'm going to define the ci, uh, the array of c constants in the end. So notice that in the first round, it will try to read last output zero, which is undefined. But we know what that value is. That value is simply the x as the input. Then we start exponentiating this base value. Base squared is equal to base i times base i. Because this is a signal, I'm going to use the arrow character. Then base to the fourth is equal to base squared times base squared. Then the last step of a round is to prepare to put the output of that round into the last output array. So last output array i plus one. So that's the last output value for the next round. That's base four i times the base itself. That gives us the fifth power of the base. Now notice that if the number of last outputs I declared is equal to the number of rounds. So when it comes to the last round, it will try to put an additional value into the array, which will make it overflow. So what I'm going to, what I need to do is to pad one last position. So the output value from the last round will not outflow the last output array. What do I return from this function? I return, okay, def define the output signal. Output h stands for hash. Hash is last output number of rounds plus k as the chart shown. All right, so for each round, you will need to add a constant and that array is actually can be generated beforehand and fixed throughout the process. So let's generate this constant array. var c number of rounds is equal to and I'm going to write a utility, JavaScript utility, to generate big numbers. So new file, generate big numbers. Then I'll, now I need additional NPN packages, namely the ethers, which will have utilities to generate random bits, bytes, and turn them into big numbers. All right, NPN install. Before that, init a default 
package.json ether. I want to install ethers. Okay. And in this file, I say const ethers is equal to require ethers. Import this package. I'm just going to write it as not a module, but simply an executable JS file. Generate if there's any error. Four. That i is equal to zero. I okay. I want a modifiable constant. Number of this constant will represent the number of big numbers we're trying to generate. Let's say ten in this case. Um, all right. Let new big number is equal to ethers so ethers provide this utility of big number which can give you big number from a wide variety of seed values in this case we're going to use random bytes provided by the util, util library from ethers and we're going to generate an unsigned integer of 256 bits. That's what we are trying to generate. Utils. Random bytes. Random bytes takes an argument that decides how many random bytes are going to be generated. And those random bytes are going to be fed into the big number from utility to get the final number. Now remember, if you remember the conversion from bytes, one byte is eight bits. So if we want 256 bits, divided, divide that with eight, this gives us 32. So you need 32 random bytes to get a number, a random number that is unsigned integer 256 bits. Okay, then just cancel log this. All right, let's call this function node generate big numbers. Okay, you can see that they are in hex format, which is not readable. So I'm going to turn them into to string dot to string string and I'd call it again these are the random numbers the routine generated great and I just put them here also by convention the C0, the first constant for the rounds, is always 0, as described from the diagram. So I'm going to take the first number and make it 0. And that's it. That's a hashing function, believe, believe it or not. So let's compile it and run it. To compile it, circum uh, feed it the circuit file, and what are we can compiling it to? R1CS, of course. Then also to because we need to calculate witnesses with it. So also WebAssembly. Okay, I made a made an error here. 
because this is not just base, but base for that particular round. So I need to index into the array. All right, it succeeded. By the way, if we want to quickly check our sanity here, there are 30 nonlinear constraints. There are 10 rounds, which means there are three constraints for each round. What are those three constraints? Meaning the three signals defined, the base squared, the base to the fourth power, and last one is base to the fifth power. These are the three necessary signals defined in each round. And that times 10 is 30 constraints. Great. Everything checks out. Now, what do we need to do next? We need to calculate a witness because What's the good of a circuit if you can't do calculations with it? Define an input.json and it will take two inputs, x and also the key, the k value. Let's just uh, do some random number here and also feed it the key, which I also just randomly typed a bunch of stuff. Okay. Then let's generate the end output node. Generate, oh, because it's in the circuit, just generate witness, feed it the WebAssembly representation of the circuit. Then the input file and the output file, which is named witness. Dot. Actually, I'm just going to name it output.witness. And it succeeded. This is in the binary format like, like last time. So we need to translate it into JSON using the witness utility from snark.js. Export JSON output witness and turn it into output.json file, which is here. And the output, as we can see, is here, 19147 blah, blah, blah. And that's the hash value for the X and K value that we entered. These are the intermediate values, and they will all be included in the construction of the proof. All right, so this works. Let's now move to Solidity. Now I'm in the Remix environment. Remix is an IDE, Ethereum Foundation made, to give you a quick environment to test some of the smaller snippets of Solidity that you've written. This saves you the time of setting up an entire dev environment in a directory. So it's very convenient. In this directory, I copied a couple notes from Circum. First, I copied the, the array of constant values for each round, because going through the same process of hashing, you need the same round constants to hash to the same value. This is very obvious. Second, I also copied over the output.json content. This will help us verify if the same input hashes to the same output. Now, if you remember the structure of such an output file, you know that after the output hash comes the input. So we have X and K right here. All right. So let's write a new contract and I'm going to call it hasher. Same thing, Solidity. The latest version, I think, is 0.8.17. It's throwing an error because I need to give it the license identifier. Also change the compiler, so this error will 
disappear. Okay, all good. Let's say contract hasher. And this will be a hashing function called mi mc5, same thing. What are the inputs? First, first you will need an x and also a key. This will be a public function view. View because we want to access the constant array, which I will define. Returns uint hash called h. So let's copy over the constant values. You int 256. And how many how many of them are there? 10. C is equal to these values. So I'm going to copy them over. Done. So now you have the C values. All right. For hashing, what do you do? You will go through the same thing. So you will have an last output. And when you first call the function, the last output is x. Same thing. So for you int, let's say i is equal to 0, i smaller than. All right, I'm going to declare the number of rounds here. You int 8 number of rounds is equal to 10, 10 rounds, number of rounds, i plus plus. For each round, you will have a base value, as always. Base is equal to last output plus the key value plus the constant for that particular round. Then you say last output is equal to, I don't know the power operator of solidity, but I believe this works. Actually, let me Google this very fast then come back. Okay, so the operator is the same as Python. You just do two multiplication symbols here and say five. And afterwards, what do you return? H is equal to last output plus K. Now how I wish it's as easy as that. But since Solidity 0 0.8 version, uh, it's not going to automatically do the modulo anymore. In the old days, uh, in a lower version, Solidity, Solidity will actually automatically wrap the number around. In technical terms, this is called overflowing, but really this is the same behavior as a modulo. But for 0 0.8 and above, you need to explicitly declare the modulo, or the, this calculation will actually throw you an error. Any number overflowing since 0 0.8 will automatically throw, throw an error. The way you do modulo in these versions, higher versions, is to use the function add mod and mol mod, so multi multiply modulo. Both of these functions take three inputs, the two elements you want to perform the operation, either addition or multiplication on, then a third argument of the p value. All right, I'm in the circum documentation here. And the p-value that they've chosen for circum is this value. You also seen this in the paper, the EIP 196, I think, that I showed you before. So let's declare this value here in the hasher. Unassigned integer 256 bits, p is equal to that value. And let's transform this code into something that would comply with the new modulo operation standard. So for the base value, 
you'll say base is equal to add mod, okay, last output with k, then modulo that p value to add a constant again, you say la. Now I already added k to the base, so I need to need to add the c value, the constant value to base again to get the new base. All right. Then comes the multiplication. They let me declare also base two and base four. The reason you need to do this because multiplication with modulo now is also a binary operation between two elements. So base two squared, let, let me say, is equal to multiply with modulo base and base modulo p base to the fourth power is equal to multiply with modulo base squared base squared modulo p and last output is equal to multiply with modulo again base to the fourth power and the base itself modulo p and for the last output use the add with modulo last output and k then modulo p what is the error expected um, about function oh because this is not the way you declare comments in solidity i also need to add a semicolon to this array declaration above so this is done great all right so let's compile it compile hash i think it is compiled automatically but to compile it manually you do it here make sure that the compiler version that you select is the same as the version you declared then let's deploy it so you come to the deployment section and say just deploy there's only one contract to deploy so i don't know if you can see this because some of the lower screen is cut off but if you can see this i can see that there's a hasher being deployed at this address and there's a function here called mimic5 with two inputs x and k so let's put the x and k in i'll get my notes this is the x value right after the output putting x x here comma then putting k this value here and call it okay so i see it gave me an answer and the answer is 1914732 ends with 40598 something like that and let's just check very quickly 1914732 ends with 40598 so this hashes to the exact same value and the hashing function is correctly implemented all right so this is how you implement a hashing routine in both circum and solidity the solidity part will go into the back end that your front end actually interact with and the circum circuit implementation will be used simply to construct the valid proof to be verified on the back end. Okay, that's all for this segment. See you in the next one.